Hey, thanks for watching the 103 GBF YouTube channel. I'm the Sandman, along with Bobby G and Ryan O'Brien. Fellas, thanks for joining in. Sure. Yes. We are GBF present and past. Amen. Ryan uh, yeah. is a former GBF DJ. That's where he got his start. Mm -hmm. Now he's the big host of Ford and O'Brien on ESPN 105.3. Of course, Bobby and I still currently work on 103 GBF. And today we want to talk about maybe some unusual things that have happened to us during our time with the radio station, or maybe some behind the scenes kind of stuff that you as a listener or a person that would go to one of our events wouldn't know about. And I'm going to start with uh, the weirdest thing that ever happened uh, in my radio career, that's for sure. Uh, in the very early 80s, 103 was known as KC 103. It was the first real rock station in the market. And uh, we had been given a sailboat by a uh, uh, a local business to give away, and we registered people, and the grand prize drawing was going to be at Thunder on the Ohio, back when it was called Thunder on the Ohio. It's like 1982. So, during that day, uh, we were able to pull the van up on Riverside Drive and pull the boat behind it, mm -hmm. right? So we got this boat, and we put the mast up and all that stuff, and we do the grand prize drawing, everybody's standing around, and Guy wins the boat, and we're talking about, you know, how he's going to get it home and stuff like that. So we start to break down the boat. So myself and a DJ, and maybe he's watching, he's still a good friend named Robin Luce. We were taking the mast down, and it slipped and hit a guy in the head and split his head open, and he sued the radio station. Was it the guy that won the boat, though? No, it was not the guy that won the boat. <laughs> okay. That would have been just a little too wonky. <laughs> like, how big of a mast are we talking? Like a 15, 20-foot full-on yeah. sailboat mast? Yeah. Like a huge, like, weighed... I mean, it was two of us who were struggling to get it down. Right. So I'm figuring a couple hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. but how, uh, how big of a gash are we talking about on this guy's head? <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure what kind of gash we're talking about. Big gash, enough that he sued, and we uh, settled out of... Uh, with him, so that was one of my weird experiences. Now I know you've got uh, each uh, one. Yeah, I'll uh, yeah I'll go. Um, when we go out and do remotes and, and live broadcasts and stuff, obviously we invite people to come say hey and whatever, sign up for whatever we got to sign up for. And sometimes though, we've all experienced it. You get that one person that decides that somewhere on your face it says, "I want your life story," uh, and whether whether I wanted it or not, I got it from this old lady. We were doing a remote, um, which in live broadcast, that's the industry term, I guess. We were at a local grocery store, and we were doing something where it was a Jeep giveaway with a local, somebody else was tied into it. And this lady came up. Uh, the remote was two hours long. She came in about halfway through, asked me what was going on, told her about it, and then she just starts going on about her life, how she was married to a guy that used to be in the military, and they lived in Fort Campbell for a while. And then it went into how she got abducted one night while she was in Fort Campbell and stripped naked and left for dead in a bean field. And, I mean, it just went on and on and on and just everything got crazier and crazier. And, and we're talking and I'm trying to, you know, I'm listening, waiting for my cue to, to go on. And she just a mile a minute, mile a minute. And I at one point just had to turn my back to her because it was time for me to talk. Yeah. So I did my thing, and as soon as I turned back around, she picked up right where she left off. <laughs> this story went on. I mean, a solid hour this lady talked to me. A guy walks up from somewhere in the neighborhood, and she stopped long enough. She's like, oh, he's bad news, and he tried to, he and his buddies tried to mug me. That's why I carry this thing around. And she wasn't carrying a purse, but like a canvas shopping bag. Yeah. She reached in and grabbed a freaking rolling pin, like a full-on <laughs> wooden, this long roll. I, I fought him off with this thing. Okay, wow. And at that point, what do you say? You're just like, really? Okay, great. Wow, good for you. I'm glad you're not hurt. And you, you don't care at that point. Um, <laughs> there was one other thing that talked about her son, who was this songwriter down in Nashville, but some country artist at that time had stolen a bunch of his songs. Of course. Of course. She had a picture of her son. Whether I wanted to see it or not, I was going to see it. So she reaches into her canvas bag and pulls out a picture of her son, which is not just like something in a wallet. It's a full-on picture frame <laughs> from his wedding back in, I don't know, 1971. <laughs> Light blue leisure suit, the frilly, oh my, it just on and on and on. And finally I said, well, we're, we're done here, because I mean, from the halfway to the end. So for an hour. A solid hour. And I said, okay, well, and have a nice day. And then you just get up and you can't drive out of there fast enough. Out of that whole story, though, 
I'm just amazed that I was laughing at a woman who had been stripped and left in a bean field. Yeah, I mean, just again, and nothing prompted it. It just like once it started going, she couldn't stop. It was just a stream of conscious what rambling. I, what I love about the story is that was probably 12, 13, oh, easily. 14 years yeah, ago. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Well over a decade ago, and you remember such. <laughs> Specific details. That's how memorable and unique that story was. To you. I have, I've yet to have anything else like that happen. <laughs> Thank, Thank God. God. <laughs> well, you, uh, I've got um, I've got a story about some some kind of behind the scenes stuff that uh, that listeners would never ever know was going on while we were also playing radio uh, back at our old building on Highway 41 in Henderson. During that transition period, when we were getting ready to move to our 41 and Lincoln building. There was a time when everybody left the building except for the DJs. We were the only ones left in that building. And you talk about the inmates running the asylum. That's what it was. Right across the hall from the GBS studio was this big empty room, this long room, which used to be where all the salespeople sat. Well, it was empty now. No desks, no nothing, except on the wall was this little plaque, an Addy Award. Now, in the radio industry and in the, the media business, you get awards for doing adver advertisements and things like that. They're called Addies. So we had this Addy Award down the far corner of this room. This is plaque. And somehow along the, some, somewhere along the way, probably Turner Watson decided it was a good idea to try and hit a ball at that plaque and knock it off. And if you could do that, you'd get a point. Right. <laughs> so it started out, we fashioned a, uh, some crude homemade racket with a piece of plastic and uh, a handle from something. And we taped it up and we, would, and we found a little foam ball and we would hit it at this award, trying to knock it off. Well, that morphed into me bringing a tennis racket from home. Well, if we're going to do this, we got to do it right. Right. And then we came up with rules. Well, it has to hit this wall first and bounce over. And it became a whole thing called Addy Ball. Addy Ball. And in between, I would start a song, and I would run across the hall, and I would play Addy Ball, and I'd get all hot and sweaty, and I'd hear, oh, crap, my song is ending. I'd run back across the hall just in time, most of the time, to, to play the next. I'm sure there, if you heard some dead air back in the, uh, oh, I don't know, the late 90s, it might have been because Turner or, or myself were playing Addy Ball across the hall. <laughs> but uh, super, super fun time with no bosses around to, to see. Back in the days when we had to push buttons and start the next CD. Yes, yeah, that's right. Before yes. Computers. Everything's on computers. And there are a couple things I think we could all weigh in on real quick that were really big events for so many years. And now that they're past, mm -hmm. I think we could, we could comment on them. First one is, is Ski Day, which I got to tell you, for me... Um, I always dreaded it. I really did. And, and, and it was really just because it would get so rough by the end of the day mm -hmm. yeah. that there were fights, there was crazy stuff going on. We had our backstage area that was supposed to be, like for us, you know, in, in the interim, while we weren't on stage, we come back and relax a little bit and get up on stage. And that was just overrun by just a bunch of drunk dudes trying to get to the girls in the bikini contest. Yeah. So ski day was... Not necessarily an event I look forward to. Yeah, I always I always dreaded it as I saw it coming up on the on the on the calendar. I will say this. Once we got across the river mm -hmm. and we were on the beach and we were set up and I got a little captain and coke in me, I had a great time. I really did. I enjoyed hanging out with everybody, both backstage, I enjoyed being up on stage. But what I dreaded the most was the two and the from. Mm -hmm. It's a sense of not being having any control over the situation. You have to wait on somebody else with a boat, um, and, and you have to kind of fight for position to get on that trip because if you don't then you have to wait another half an hour for it to At get least. across the river and come yeah. back so that was the biggest hassle i remember one year we uh we were going back across the river after at the end of the night and we had too much weight on the pond too. were you on that trip with us I was watching. I saw it. The boat started to take on the pontoon boat started to take on water from the front so we all had to scramble to the back to barely to get it up out of the water to make it back across the river. I thought you guys were going to sink for sure. We, well, I really so did. We, we thought we were, yeah. we were ready to jump off the side. Well, and, that's, and it's like that for me, too. It wasn't that I I didn't enjoy the event. Because right. once we got there, we got some yeah. set up. And like you said, I opened up the cooler. I cracked a couple beers. It's all good to go. But it is. It's Because it, for us, it's like the people that are going there just to enjoy the day. Some have been there since the night before, and they're just all tore up from the flow up, uh, as Bobby likes to say. I do. But for us, it's like getting up. The event would be from like noon to 5, but we had to get up at like 7 o'clock in the morning. We had to be at the boat ramp by like 9.30 to catch the shuttle over, and sometimes you get on a boat by 10 if you got on the first one. If not, it's 10.30, 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But with, it was coolers, and it was tents, and, and getting all that stuff across. And then at the end of the day, it's 5 o'clock, we got to tear it all down, got to wait for a boat to come back and get us. And we may not be even back on the, on the 
dock side of things until seven o'clock, and then you still got to get yourself home. And it's just yeah. a, it was a very long day. But during that twelve to five window, sure, when you're just having a good time and people were up on stage and were hooting and hollering and that stuff, that part was awesome. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's it was the to and from and, and the before and the after that we just kind of went, oh, it's gonna be a long yeah. day. I, I'm not sad. I'm not sad to see <laughs> yeah. it, to see it gone. I will mention on a positive <laughs> note though, over the last couple of years. Thank you, Oscar Velez. You made it a lot oh, yeah. easier. OV Water Sports for us to get back and forth. So thanks, Oscar, for that. Yeah, no and, criticism on him. He, yeah, those guys who took us great. across were great. It's just having to wait, you know. You're right. Yeah. And and in closing, we have all at one time or another hosted Thong Thursday at Fast Dance. Oh uh, yes, we have. Yeah. And I gotta what, tell you, what event are you talking? What event is that? <laughs> yeah, Thong is that Thursday. Something we did. You can still Google Thong Thursday, and it'll take you to the archives of our website. Uh, I'm sure it will. Here's my take on Thong ahead. Thursday. <laughs> It, I'll say this. It was great when it started. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, but, you know, things change. Society changes. Um, the ladies' willingness to participate changed over the years. Um, ownership changes in the venue, things like that. Things just change, and that event certainly did change, not for the better. Well, it's one of those sure. things where it started off really well, mm -hmm. and it was a strong showing week in and week out. And, and after a while, the novelty of it wears off. And so the people aren't as interested in it anymore, but there are others that want it to keep going because right. they assume that it's going to continue to be what right. it was when it first started. If that would have been a more seasonal thing, right? maybe just summertime, we propose and that bring too. it back yeah. instead of just continuous throughout the year. Because I hosted it for two years straight. And so I kind of watched <laughs> the decline. And it went on <laughs> after... I mean, it went on for a few years after I was done with it. It certainly ran its course. It ran its course. Uh, I think I was one of the last guys to host it. Yep. I yeah, was the first one... Been. I, I started it back in the, the late 90s, mm -hmm. and then you picked it up somewhere along the way, and you were the one of the last ones to host it. And I still have regrets. He wakes that. up at night, cold sweats, screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the 103 GBF story. Uh, so just a, a, yeah, there's, there's many more. <laughs> okay, that's like the first few pages of the book right yeah, there. exactly. The so That's the epilogue or the prologue, which is first. <laughs> I don't read. Thank you to Ryan O'Brien, Bobby G. I'm the Sandman. Turn that camera off! <laughs>